Welcome to the Urban Ministry Show. Today, we're asking the question, what does urban mean? We've got a show called Urban Ministry Show, but what does urban ministry mean? What does urban mean? Is this urban? Is this urban? Is this urban? What about this? Is this urban? What is urban? I mean, the word is used so many ways by different people. Um, it's used in music. It's used in architecture, a different way to how it's used in music. And it's used in, in uh, Christian ministry in a different way to how it's used in music. And it all gets really confusing. And uh, there's a lot of big implications for this. So what we're going to look at today with the help of my friends and family is what does urban mean? So here I've asked my friends and family. If you hear urban, what do you think? Um, council estates, um, I guess drug culture, gang culture, stuff like that. Interesting. Um, I think urban means to me um, sort of in the city, when I say in the city, so like in the city, like in the States, um, that sort of thing. But I think it's recently sort of been sort of made a bit more broader. So like, especially with gentrification and stuff. So like you go to like Sawditch or something like that, people will say that's an urban place. Or like even Brixton. Obviously Brixton's always sort of been urban, but now that it's been gentrified, it's even something different. So people classify that sort of thing as urban as well. So. It's quite boring, to be honest. That's a deep answer there. I wasn't expecting gentrification to come in. Well, that's heavy. To me, it means isolated, concrete, no trees, not a lot of places to socialise, high density population, mostly working class, but it could be posh downtown and all, but mostly it's rough. Urban, it's like a melting pot within the inner city, for me, in terms of like, Different, different cultures, different, different types of people, but just kind of like a small snippet of like what, what all these different cultures are about. And just kind of like vibrancy, whenever I hear that word, um, um, it's quite vibrant, quite colorful. And that's why you kind of get the, the melting pot kind of vibe. Uh, mostly I think of flats or apartments, um, lots of people living in us, concentrated area, um, diverse cultures. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, for me, I think um, it represents like the center of excellence, where that attracts everybody. Everyone, everyone is pulling from the same port. There is so much attraction from other areas, the same place. So it's like sort of center of civilization and um, modernization, etc. Yeah. Wow. Um, urban means to me like unique, different, just different people getting together, doing different things, but everything sort of fits together quite uniquely. Um, yeah, that's what it kind of means to me. <laughs> so a bunch of responses there and, and all of those responses are helpful. And I think all those responses are, are true, especially in light of you see how I define urban. Um, and this is not taken away from uh, if, if you're in the music industry and you're chatting about urban music or if you're in architecture and you're talking about urban architecture or, or whatever. I'm just saying for me personally, what helps me is to think of urban in terms of where you've got humanity en masse. You've got loads of humans living together en masse, which means uh, as a whole, you've got humanity as a whole. Uh, so so but what it means is you've got all types of people in urban areas. It's not just like one type of person. It's all types of people because you've got so many people together living in built up areas. And so uh, in Harvey Conn's book on urban ministry, he says in a city you have you have uh, more of everything, more of everything. And if you think about it in terms of people, more of every type of person. Um, in urban areas, you tend to get, and it increases over time, over time, you tend to get all types of people together. So you get poor people and you get rich people together in urban areas. You get people from different cultures, uh, with different classes. You get people from different ethnicities. You get a different array of people with different disabilities and abilities. In terms of creativity, you get 
a wide range of different creative types. You know what? One thing that's worth pointing out as well is that there's some places that people can consider urban because they're built up areas. A lot of people live in there, but they'd say, do you know what though? Here we don't have a lot of diversity. It's all one kind of person. Um, but, but the thing is you actually find that in those areas, you still got more of everything, uh, than you've got in say like the suburbs and that, but also what you'll find is over time, urban areas are becoming more diverse. They're getting more and more of everything. And what I found is that church leaders are often a bit behind the times on these things and they don't really notice what's happening. And, and, and you know, we all do it. We don't, we don't notice what's happening and, and don't realize that our areas are becoming more diverse in ways that we're not aware of until years later. And then we're suddenly like, oh, and we're kind of behind the curve. Uh, we, I think we need to be ahead of the curve and see what is God doing in our urban areas? Who are the people he's bringing them to? And how can we make sure that we're reaching all of them? Uh, which, which means that in, in urban places, in cities, what you've got is more of everything. More of everything that humanity has to offer, the good and the bad. And that has a whole bunch of implications for us because that means if we're talking about urban ministry, we're talking about serving, which is ministry, we're serving to all types of people, all kinds of people. We're talking about serving all of humanity, not just going over one select group. And so that, there's so many implications from that. So for one thing, if you think about it, what that means is that a lot of the resources that Christian use uh, in the UK anyway, a lot of them come from the suburbs. Okay, and the suburbs typically tend to be places where you've got more middle class, more homogeneity, people who have left the city. Um, and so if our resources are coming from the suburbs and then we're trying to apply them to city life in urban areas, we're maybe not going to be uh, as, as well resourced as if we were saying, hang on a minute, in urban areas, we've got all kinds of people. Let's develop more resources from urban areas that are actually going to reach more types of people. Also, in terms of the issues we face in urban areas, we're facing all kinds of issues, which means if you're working in urban ministry in a short period of time, you come across all issues that mankind has faced. Or, or, you know, not totally, but you know, I'm kind of exaggerating hyperbole here, right? And so what that means is then you start facing a whole bunch of issues that are useful in the suburbs as well and are useful in rural areas. That's not to say that from the suburbs and rural areas, we can't learn a lot of things. There's a lot we can learn from there. But in the urban areas, we need to be producing resources that are helping everyone to reach all kinds of people. I think another implication is we don't want to be uh, like... Uh, forced into a niche so, so that often happens people are like oh you're urban so we want to hear from you if you're talking about council estate ministry or if you're talking about using rap music or grime music or garage music to reach out to people but we don't want to hear from you in other issues and and we can fall into that and play into that where we end up being like parceled off to the side like we're in some niche thing called urban ministry where really urban ministry is is where you're dealing with all kinds of people that end up coming together. Um, so if you think about it in the Bible, in the book of Acts, you see this in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, urban area, it's a city, loads of people living together, humanity en masse, right? And, and then as, as the gospel comes to the place, what you start seeing is problems arising, like the problem with the Hellenistic widows, Okay, and there's a problem there and it's to do with ethnicity, it's to do with culture and they deal with it there. That is an urban church dealing with urban issues. Then you look at when the Christians move to Antioch, right? They go to Antioch and some of them are only talking to Jews. So they're, they're, they're acting in a way that doesn't really work well in urban ministry. That's more of a suburban mindset. We're only going to talk to the Jews, right? And this is Acts chapter 11. And then it says, but some of them talk to the Greeks as well. And so then they're saying, we're going to talk to these other people here. And then in the end, what you had in Antioch, you had this church that had Jew and Gentile. And it was the first time that that Christians were called Christians because they needed a new name for it. They're like, they're not Jews. They're not Greeks. What do we call them? Oh, let's call them Christians, followers of Christ. And so and so in the Bible, we see urban ministry happen in the cities and it ends up dealing with all kinds of people. And and they had problems to do with like the poor. So the Apostle Paul 
them would like help the poor. That was something he was very keen to do. That was something the apostles in the urban church in Jerusalem wanted Paul to do as well, if you check out what it says in Galatians. So urban ministry means reaching out to all kinds of people because in urban areas, you've got humanity en masse, humanity as a whole. You've got more of everything in the city. And so all of us guys in urban ministry, we need to ask ourselves a question. Are we reaching out to all kinds of people? Are we truly doing urban ministry or have we just become a niche thing? Great to have you on the Urban Ministry Show. We'll be back. We'll talk about more things like to do with this. I also want to do some reviews and stuff. God bless.